So let's talk about how, how to build teams, okay? The mindset of building a team and why you want to actually build a team. So what's the, what's the purpose of building a team? Like, why would you want to build a team? Leadership skills, what else? Learn how to duplicate yourself, what else? To get higher numbers, right? You can only do so much as an individual, but with a team you can do so much more. Why else would you want to be building a team? To develop yourself, I love that, right? If you duplicate yourself, you're able to duplicate yourself into multiple places. Um, so the purpose of you going to build a team is for what purpose? So you can duplicate yourself. Why do you want to duplicate yourself, Harry? So you can multiply your results, right? If you're out there by yourself, let's say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, as an example, okay, you have Saturday and Sunday, can you guarantee that every single day will be an amazing day, no struggles, no challenges, no ups, no downs, no lefts, no rights? You can't guarantee that, right? Because sometimes shit happens, okay? But what you can guarantee, if you have 10 people on your team, as an example, can you guarantee that a high percentage of them will actually have a good day almost every single day? Because you're putting your odds, you're spreading your risk into multiple people, right or wrong? That's why companies hire people. They don't hire one engineer, they hire five engineers. They don't hire one person, they hire 10 people. Why? And a lot of times, most jobs, they hire two people or three people for that same position. And then 90 days later, two people get fired. Did you guys know that or no? They do it all the time. They want to find the best out of the three. And you might say, well, Mike, aren't they wasting money by hiring three people for 90 days? Actually, as a matter of fact, they save a lot of money. Because if you, imagine hiring the wrong person. I've been there. <laughs> hiring the wrong person costs you way more money than not hiring someone, right? And sometimes it's better to not hire anyone in certain positions, right? But I, I, I've learned that it's better to master duplicating yourself because you have a higher chance of creating success. Now, in this business specifically, in other businesses, they may not you know, compensate you for that, but in this business specifically, when you build a team, you get compensated. Yeah, you get compensated. You get what we call as what? Overrides. Overrides. Now, what is an override? Yeah, you get a little percentage, a little incentive for what your team actually creates in the field. You get paid for production, right? And the beautiful thing about this is when I started building teams, I did not have overrides, as a matter of fact, right? But what I got out of this, I had nine people on my team. There was 13 people total. I was the 10th. There was three other people that were not on our team. I literally brought in nine people into that office. Just imagine having a team of 13 people in an office and all 10 of them were just us. And I personally recruited them. Now, why did I do that? Was I getting an override? I wasn't getting an override. But what I, exactly, what I was getting out of that was a massive educational lesson, right? I was learning how to duplicate myself. And then guess what? When that company shut down and I had to start my own business because I didn't have any other choice, I was so fucking ready to build a team. I had the skill set, right or wrong. The skill set was what happened during that process of me building those teams. I learned exactly what to do and what not to do when I was building those people. I learned how to make sales while I'm training somebody. Because it's very easy to make sales by yourself. That's the first step. First step is to what? Learn how to sell by yourself. How many of you guys learn how to sell by yourself? <clears throat> okay, it's pretty simple, right? The second stage is learning how to sell yourself and also train someone else how to sell. That's another skill set, okay? How many of you guys DM, DM girls? You DM girls sometimes? Okay, is there a reason behind every single DM or you just randomly say shit? There's a reason, okay? There's a psychological reason why you, there's a certain time, certain message, certain words, certain emoji, certain, everything is strategic. There's no like, oh, some guys are the like, idiot, right? Everything has to be planned out properly, right? Because it's, it's strategy. It's not just throwing mud against the wall and hoping it sticks. Some of you guys talk to 100 girls hoping one sticks. That's a waste of time. Right? It's better to talk to a few and have a strategy behind it and know exactly what you're trying to accomplish. Be a sniper versus shotgunning everywhere around. Does that make sense? So, so you got to understand why. Very important. That's the, psych the, the, the psychological reason of why we understand. The other reason I want to explain to you guys that helped me out tremendously is I learned exactly what I didn't need to do. Right? I learned what not to do and what actually to do. So when it comes to building teams, you got to remember one thing. Okay? Always remember this. Anybody have kids here? Anybody have kids? Sucks to be you. Just kidding, right? Well, how many guys have seen kids and their parents, and you see the parents doing something, and the kids copy exactly what the parents are doing? Right? And you probably see this all the time outside. Kids do not do 
what parents tell them to do. Kids do what they see their parents do. Right or wrong? You could tell the kids, don't do this, don't do this, don't do that. But if you're smoking cigarettes, guess what's going to happen to the kids? They're going to smoke cigarettes. Okay, I promise you, drinking alcohol is the same thing. Smoking weed is the same shit. So you saw someone do it and you thought it was okay. Right or wrong? Right? How many guys have family members that actually drink a lot of alcohol? Or cousins or anyone like that? Right? So you, so you think it's normal? Right? Imagine working in an environment where alcohol is all day all around you. You think it's normal because it's part of what you see, right? We are human beings, and what we see is what we do. Same thing with your team members. What they see is what they will duplicate. So what I used to do when I used to build teams, I used to make sure that my days were packed out and productive as hell because I knew that if my days are going to be productive, guess what happens when my team is with me? They're going to know it's productive as shit. So let's talk about some of the habits, right, some of the habits that it takes to have a successful team. Number one, okay, for me personally, personally, everything I did, Everything I did was about a thousand eyes watching me. Everything I did, I knew that if I'm going to go to the field late, guess what's going to happen with my team? They're going to go late. If I go to the if I, if I go to the field early, guess what's going to happen with my team? They're going to want to go early, right? Because if they're going early, I know that I can go out there. I know I can go out there. I know I can go out there, okay? And I can bang out, as an example, let's say you're in, in like a, a, a top tier sales in two, three hours, let's say. I know I can do that. I can go out there, bang out for a couple hours, and have massive results. So I know if I go there from 4 to 8 p.m., I'm going to create great results. Not always, but consistently, I'll say 80 plus percent of the time. Right? Dave, you can go over there so you can see. Right? So what that basically means is that I know that I'm fucking amazing and I can do fucking a great amount of sales between 4 and 8. But what about my team? Can they do that? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I'm not trying to duplicate superstars. That's not what I'm trying to do. Because I know the masses of asses will never be like me. And I understand that. I'm okay with that. The masses of asses will not be as great as you. So what, you need to, so what I used to do is I used to go to the field between 1 o'clock and 9 o'clock. Because I'm like, listen, if they see me get to the field between 1 and 1.30, right, and they see me leave exactly at 9 o'clock or after 9 o'clock, what does that mean? If they duplicate me, I know for a fact they're going to get results if they're good, bad, hairy, ugly, stupid, short. It doesn't matter. As long as they follow this, this, this work ethic process, they're going to hit their results. Right, Harry? So it doesn't, I did not, I, I was not trying to be, I wasn't looking for shortcuts. I wasn't trying to, I wasn't trying to look for shortcuts. I was looking for ways that my team is going to duplicate my successes. And not just my successes, because it's very hard to duplicate my successes, but duplicate my habits, right? My objective was to create an, an environment where my guys, we're not copying word to word what I was saying. It's very difficult to copy me 100%. But what I wanted them to copy is what? My habits. My mindset. My behaviors. Right? My activities. So like, for example, before I went to the field, I would put on good podcast videos, put good audio programs, I, or maybe a little bit of music to pump myself up because I'm going to the field to attack. I'm going to war, right? I'm not going to be listening to a fucking violin playing. I'm not listening to funeral music, okay? I'm not listening to, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not on the phone with my family going through bullshit and drama right before the field. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine talking to your ex-girlfriend right before the fucking field? Can you imagine having arguments with someone in your family right before you're about to go to work? Right, right before you're about to go to work? Drama, drama, drama. Then you want to go fucking create championship in the field? It ain't gonna happen, puppy. It ain't gonna happen. You gotta, you gotta protect your mind. So before one o'clock, I didn't let no one fucking call me. Girlfriend, I already knew it was a problem. She, I'm like, why you call me at one o'clock? There's a problem. What's going on? Voice note. If it's an emergency, let me know. Hit me up after nine. Because I knew it was going to be problems. Right? I did not want to pollute my mind. My mind is to be protected at all costs. I don't want to hear no bullshit. I, as a matter of fact, all the drama in my life, th there's no drama. I have zero drama in my life. I haven't had drama in years. Actually, I'm lying. I had drama with my ex-girlfriend, but that's gone. <laughs> right? But outside of that, there was no drama. And I eliminated the drama. Why? Because I don't want to be, I, I don't want that shit on my fucking plate. As a matter of fact, the last year I've been fucking amazing. Zero drama. Nobody fucking calls me and tells me, oh, Michael, this, that. Family drama? I haven't heard that in years. Why is that? Because don't call me for family drama. I don't give a fuck. 
Don't call me. Call fucking someone else. Call Cousin Joey. Don't call fucking me. Why is that? Because I'm not getting involved in that crap. Because my mind is to be protected. If you like this kind of content, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, and share it with someone that can actually be impacted by this video. I appreciate you guys. And once again, thank you for showing us support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. And we'll see you guys in the next video.